Hi, everybody. It is June 28, 2021. Welcome to Tropical Storm Danny off the coast of South Carolina. You are looking at these concentric rings of nanobots, as well as perhaps a wet surface air cooler that, yes, they can, oh, float around on boats. Now, when I've mentioned in videos one particular technology that I see in use, uh, it doesn't mean that that's the only thing that, you know, can, they can, uh, it's the only tool to create weather. They have many, many tools, and they're quite advanced. So everything that we know, there's an awful lot we don't know about how they are bringing an awful lot of destruction, and I'm going to show you more. It's truly amazing. So, Tropical Storm Danny forms off the South Carolina coast. Who knew? Well, this was on the 26th at 5.54 p.m. Nothing but a whole lot of nanobot activation. And look at how nicely precise is this line right here. And this line, right. Okay. So, did I... Yes, I did. I guess this was Tropical Storm Danny. That does not look very formed at all. Not at all. But even, you can see the... Uh, when you see defined lines in cloud, well, manufactured cloud, or very defined circular patterns, you know electromagnetic frequencies are in use. And as you can see, this is a electromagnetic frequency hit right here and also here, the extremely low frequencies. It, it's throughout. You can see another one right here. It's dark, I know, but, um, well, I guess this is Tropical Storm Danny, and frankly, they can say whatever the hell they want to say now. And, you know, our population is so dumbed down that they just sit, listen. You know, I don't even think that they can uh, really put together what is being said at this point. But this is the 27th, and it is 12.46 a.m., and I'm that's mountain time. So, say 2.46 and there's nothing here. Do have these extremely low frequency hits. I guess this is the tropical storm. All right. Again, you can see the defined lines right here. Sorry, I had, when I captured it, I was also pointing. Uh, you know, they can create whatever the hell they want, and that's it. That's We, we just have to live with it. Uh, I, I can't believe it, but that's the way the world is going. Hell, man, wow. So, again, there's no storm here, and this is the 27th yesterday at 2.31. So it's about 4.31 on the East Coast. Ah, really? Okay. This whole thing is tropical storm? The whole thing is like a... Look at all of the nanobots. All of these, you know, what glitters mm, sometimes is not gold. It's uh, nanotechnology in use. Nothing here on the West Coast, of course, because, well, we're just being pummeled with a heat wave. That, yeah, it's hard to take every single day. But, again, nada. All right. You have an, a whole big, long line. Again, this was yesterday. Mountain time. 
2.31 p.m., the activation of our fabulous nanobots in our atmosphere. This was the 27th at um, 6.35 p.m. Still nothing here. But, you know, they're growing the weather fronts. Mexico, so pummeled with flooding. All right, so this is your tropical storm. And what happened to this, well, storm in the Gulf? I don't know. But look at, look at the air masses moving in all different directions, you know. The creation of atmospheric instabilities, they can bring about anything. And you can create atmospheric instabilities with electromagnetic frequencies. So, um, <clears throat> let me show you what's happening now. Sorry. This is happening now. Okay, this is your tropical storm, I guess. It has formed. They're calling it a tropical storm. Though I saw a broadcast, and it was posted about two hours ago, it had not formed. And that supposed meteorologist said, but even if it doesn't form into a tropical storm, there will be heavy downpours of rain, flash flooding. Yay. Okay. Well, why don't we just take a listen? Jeremy Nelson, just a very quick update. The National Hurricane Center put out a special advisory at 3.05 p.m. This is now Tropical Storm Danny. Winds are up to 40 miles per hour. It's just to the east of the South Carolina coastline. This will continue on a northwesterly track. It's moving at 16 miles per hour. Center of circulation pretty well defined right here. Uh, now maybe about 40 or 50 miles to the east of Buford, and it is going to make a landfall somewhere between Buford County and up around the Charleston area. Very strong thunderstorm over the open waters of the Atlantic. If that continues on a west-northwest track, that could be somewhere around Hilton Head Island, Hunting Island, into Port Royal within about the next 60 to uh, about 80 minutes. There it is, lots of lightning with that, some pretty strong winds contained within that. So the coastal areas could still be seeing wind gusts uh, over 30 miles per hour by late afternoon into this evening. Heavy downpour is the main concern. We'll continue to track this here. We also have our WJCL 22 news app ready to go. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, well, you know, oh, uh, Look at what now is happening in Texas. Look, all of these little, little colored dots that suddenly appear, that is nanotechnology that you're looking at. This is coming down south. This is going up northeast. This is just kind of hang stagnant in New Mexico. And this is coming into uh, onto the coast and it's um, going in a different direction, you know, northwest. But look at it, all of this. It's literally just appearing before your eyes. Okay. So, I have this to play. I posted this video years ago, 2018. And yeah, 11 minutes. I hope you make it through listening carefully. I hope you circulate it. Very important to what we are faced with. And I'm going to show you what what is going on in several states. It, it just, it's endless. And all of those people who roll their eyes at you, call you a conspiracy theorist, unfortunately, they've, uh, their brains have just been taken over. 
by the authority figures and the authoritative sources. They don't think anymore. They're a danger to society. They're a danger to all of us. They're a danger to humanity, y the human race. They're a danger. Mr. President, honored delegates, ladies and gentlemen, we shall propose further cooperative efforts between all the nations in weather prediction and eventually in weather control. Remarks the President to the National Academy of Science from Constitution Hall in Washington, D.C., October 22, 1963. And third, there is the atmosphere itself, the atmosphere in which we live and breathe and which makes life on this planet possible. Scientists have studied the atmosphere for many decades, but its problems continue to defy us. The reasons for our limited progress are obvious. Weather cannot be easily reproduced and observed in the laboratory. It must therefore be studied in all of its violence, wherever it has its way. Here is an oceanography. New scientific tools have become available with modern computers, rockets, and satellites. The time is ripe to harness a variety of disciplines for a concerted attack. And even more than oceanography, the atmospheric sciences require worldwide observation and hence international cooperation. Some of our most successful international efforts have involved the study of the atmosphere. We all know that the World Meteorological Organization has been effective in this field. It is now developing a worldwide weather system to which nations the world over can make their contribution. Such cooperative undertakings can challenge the world's best efforts for decades to come. And fourth, I would mention a problem which I know has greatly concerned many of you. That is our responsibility to control the effects of our own scientific experiments. For as science investigates the natural environment, it also modifies it. And that modification may have incalculable consequences for evil as well as for good. In the past, the problem of conservation has been mainly the problem of human waste, of natural resources, of their destruction. But science has the power for the first time in history now to undertake experiments with premeditation which can irreversibly alter our biological and physical environment on a global scale. The problem is difficult because it is hard to know in advance whether the cumulative effects of a particular experiment will help or harm mankind. In the case of nuclear testing, the world is satisfied that radioactive contamination involves unnecessary risks, and we are all heartened that more than 100 nations have joined to outlaw testing in environments where the effects most directly threaten mankind. In other fields, we may be less sure. We must, for example, balance the gains of weather modification against the hazards of protracted drought or storm. The government has the clear responsibility to weigh the importance of large-scale experiments to the advance of knowledge or to national security against the possibility of adverse and destructive effects. The scientific community must assist the government in arriving at rational judgments and interpreting these issues to the public. To deal with this problem, we have worked out formal procedures within the government to assure expert review before potentially risky experiments are undertaken. And we will make every effort to publish the data needed to permit open examination and discussion of proposed experiments by the scientific community before they are authorized. If science is to press ahead in the four fields that I have mentioned, if it is to continue to grow in effectiveness and productivity, our society must provide scientific inquiry the necessary means of sustenance. We must, in short, support it. Military and space needs, for example, offer little justification for much work in what Joseph Henry called abstract science. Though such fundamental inquiry is essential to the future technological vitality 
of industry and government alike, it is usually more difficult to comprehend than applied activity, and as a consequence, often seems harder to justify to the Congress, to the executive branch, and to the people. But if basic research is to be properly regarded, it must be better understood. I ask you to reflect on this problem and on the means by which in the years to come our society can assure continuing backing to fundamental research in the life sciences, the physical sciences, the social sciences, on natural resources, on agriculture, on protection against pollution and erosion. Together the scientific community, the government, industry, and education must work out the way to nourish American science in all its power and vitality. Even this year, we have already seen in the first uh, actions of the House of Representatives some uh, failure of support for uh, important areas of research which must depend on the national government. I think it's, I'm hopeful that uh, the Senate of the United States will restore these funds. What it needs, of course, is a wider understanding by the country as a whole of the value of this work, which has been uh, so sustained by so many of you. I would not close, however, on a gloomy note. For ours is a century of scientific conquest and scientific triumph. If scientific discovery has not been an unalloyed blessing, if it has only conferred on mankind the power, it has only conferred on mankind the power not only to create, but also to annihilate, it has at the same time provided humanity with a supreme challenge and a supreme testing. If the challenge and the testing are too much for humanity, then we're all doomed. But I believe that the future can be bright, and I believe it can be certain. Man is still the master of his own fate, and I believe that the power of science and the responsibility of science have offered mankind a new opportunity, not only for intellectual growth, but for moral discipline not only for the acquisition of knowledge, but for the strengthening of our nerve and our will. We are bound to grope for a time as we grapple with problems without precedent in human history. But wisdom is the child of experience. In the years since man unlocked the power stored within the atom, the world has made progress, hauling, but effective, towards bringing that power under human control it lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather and he who controls the weather will control the world and ultimately to control the weather and he who controls the weather will control the world Fourth, I would mention a problem which I know has greatly concerned many of you. That is our responsibility to control the effects of our own scientific experiments. For as science investigates the natural environment, it also modifies it. And that modification may have incalculable consequences for evil as well as for good. Tropical storm Harvey is pummeling southern We're live Texas. here in Houston, where Harvey's rains keep coming. It's not the initial impact, but the flooding. Record shattering rain, massive flooding, families stranded. Waters keep rising. This is just the beginning. Hi, if anyone in shelter and can hear us, please help. I need a rescue. These are three kids, no food or water. Do we have anyone in the friendship area? Where's that friendship humble address area. at? What's the humble address where they're trying There's to let us know? There's been a report of another five foot of water about to pour out of Baker Dam. Ten in Normandy, we need help. Families are going under with the we current. We need strong the boats. Boat. Are I ten in Normandy, families are on these boats. They, they need boats under. out there. And I they said a white truck went under the water. So and I'm like, well, it can't be him because he headed to my house. Once I kept calling his wife, dialing 911, and no response. I kept calling him, no response. Hi, ma'am. This is Texas Game Warden Carmen Ripple. It's my understanding that you guys have called to be evacuated from your residence. Is that correct? Do you know the condition of the water around the house? I don't know, ma'am. Stand by. We're going to try to get somebody out there to help you. I mean, lasers? Really? To change the weather? That's right. Well, as Mark Twain once famously said, everyone complains about the weather, but no one ever does anything about it. <laughs> Well, instead of doing a rain dance, we physicists are firing trillion-watt lasers.
lasers into the sky to actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts. This is potentially a game changer. When you have water vapor and you have dust particles or ice crystals, you can precipitate rain. It condenses around the seeds. These seeds can also be created by laser beams. By firing trillion watt lasers, you rip apart the electrons, creating what are called ions, and these ions act like seeds, like dust particles, bringing down rain and even lightning. Go ahead. Well, I, I, this is fascinates me in part because, too, I remember reading the stories that China had used this during the Olympics, that the USSR had used this after Chernobyl to create rain clouds. Even in the 60s, the CIA used this to uh, bring down monsoons during the Vietnam War to wash out the Viet Cong. Well, try as you might, right? Um, so, here's another one. A rare weather event today. Power plants are making it snow in Nebraska. New at 10, Channel 8 Eyewitness News reporter Katrina Spurl explains it all for us. Katrina? That's right. I spoke with the National Weather Service who said today's weather conditions were just right for the power plants to generate snow. Quite the phenomenon in Nebraska on Monday. Many places were being dusted with snow, but it wasn't from Mother Nature. It was actually man-made. The National Weather Service location in the Omaha and Valley area reported that the snow was actually created by the steam from power plants in Norfolk. When you're driving around on a typical day, uh, you may pass a, a plant of some sort and you see the steam that it's producing. Typically that just evaporates. Uh, but on a day like today where we had just the right temperatures, just the right humidity in place, it was able to actually produce snow. It's not common, but it has happened before in the United States. But it's very common now. The water, um, the, uh, these wet surface coolers all over, all over, creating snow, creating rain, creating cloud, and one just needs... Yeah, look, they don't. That, what's really infuriating is that so many of us have done the research for them, posted the videos. All they have to do is sit back, click on a video, watch it. A lot of people are really getting destroyed. Yes, on a daily basis. Now, this is Detroit. I 94, still underwater. Two days later still under water. Cars, still. The, the owners of these vehicles can kiss them, kiss them goodbye, um, but there were, is it I-96, 94, and 75? Now in Detroit where the interstate just became flooded, oh, because the pump stations were out and so much rain came down. Well, I showed yesterday in the video that water, they were gushing out from um, the sides, from the, there's just a reverse of the drainage system that they just dumped into the interstate. Now, this is today. This is today. Still sitting there. Now, when you have in Detroit interstates that are closed for days, what then happens to our supply chain? Well, let's just say it gets more disrupted. This is today, two days later, 48 hours. And in 
many places the water has not gone down. No drainage, I guess, in Detroit anymore, right? That's it. Um, <laughs> truly amazing. And these are different parts of interstates. It's gone down some. These cars are gone. Oh. Another car right here. Completely submerged. It's amazing. Listen to this, though. This is really important. This is the former, now he's retired, former, uh, the director of the Texas Weather Modification Association. He gives a mainstream media interview talking about how he can make rain in a, uh, a wider area, make it rain much longer. Now, we're having many Harvey's all over, all over now. I will link below. You can listen to the, you know, the, the full video. But this is what he is talking about with just cloud seeding. Cloud seeding uh, is the um, method that they've been using for many, many decades. But because of our technological advances, there are so many more tools that they have now, methods. Now, this is the really the method that they've used for decades. He doesn't talk about the creation of cloud, but he's talking about what they can do, what they've been able to do in Texas. And when you say they responded very well, what does that mean? It means that the storm lived longer and produced more rain over a larger area. And how do we know that it did that? I mean... Okay, you can listen to this. Um, when you hear that from the guy who is the director of the Weather Modification Association in Texas, and they even have a YouTube channel where they talk about how they are oh, so successful in their efforts to produce more rain in counties across Texas. When you think about Harvey, four days of tremendous rain. Okay, sorry to say this, but this is why I consider our fellow Americans a very big danger to all of us who continue to, well, with great hostility and arrogance, you know, just, you know, demand their right to remain willfully ignorant. At this point, with so much destruction, increasing destruction throughout the years, with the Harvey, with the Katrina, with the floods in Baton Rouge. They are a danger, and they're complicit with all of this destruction. Four days of rain. Well, we can make it rain uh, in a, a bigger area and for much longer and bring down more rain. Detroit. You know, I have to say, wow, um... In all my years of doing this, I, I, I've never seen something like what took place this weekend in Detroit. It's really, it was fast, interstates all over flooded, the disruption, all of the homes flooded, all of the cars flooded. And I'm just talking about Detroit. 
there were other areas that were hit in Michigan with tornadoes. You know, I'm more rain coming. Welcome to Monday, everybody. Taking a look at the radar, we see a little bit of wet weather on the maps here off to our west. Is it going to head our way? That's the question. With scattered showers and thunderstorms, Brandon is monitoring the radar closely and will have an update for us. Those showers and storms, though, prompting more concern because Metro Detroit is already still coping with the impact of the widespread flooding. As you can see, video from hard hit areas that are still underwater this noon. Take a look at the live pictures. This is I-94. It remains closed in both directions between Dearborn and Detroit, Greenfield to the I-96 interchange because it is still underwater. The severe weather began on Friday and more wet weather is expected this week. The threat of more bad weather has caused the White House to cancel Vice President Kamala Harris's trip to Metro Detroit that was scheduled for today. And right now, Governor Whitmer is on the ground here in Detroit. She is going to be touring the flood damage this afternoon. Mayor Mike Duggan also is talking about the situation this afternoon. So there is great concern. Meantime, our team has been surveying the storm damage since the Trouble began on Friday, and it's still hard to believe that parts of Dearborn streets, like the freeway in I-94, is still underwater. Victor Williams is live in Dearborn for us. Brandon Rue here in the studio with me, monitoring what may be headed our way. So, Brandon, we'll start with you. All right, Rhonda, we just have a, a sort of isolated... The weather report was about... The, the rain, and it wasn't supposed to be that bad. It was supposed to clear up, but more rain is on your way. Yes, good afternoon, Brandon. We're in the neighborhood that was really hit hardest by the flooding. As a result, a lot of the property that were in a lot of these people's basements are now irreplaceable because they're all damaged. Take a look also at some of the cars out here. This car was underwater, the doors are open, and now people are hoping that it can dry and things get back to normal. But we're told that there was at least three feet of water inside of everyone's basement, causing thousands in water damage. Dearborn seems to be a place where finished basements are popular, meaning that there's a lot of furniture and appliances that have been damaged beyond repair. Now, some cars may never be the same, many of them being completely submerged under the water as that heavy rain continued to fall over the weekend. But now, a lot of people are becoming irritated with the fact that this isn't the first time that they've had to feel the wrath of Mother Nature. It's frustrating because this happened back in 2014 and uh, the same thing happened, but this year it shouldn't have happened again. It should have been prepared. The insurance it won't cover nothing. It will cover me up to ten thousand uh dollars. -huh. I mean, I got more than fifty thousand dollars damage, you know. So more than likely, this is going to be a very lengthy recovery process. We'll have. Yes, it will. And insurance. Oh, fifty thousand. I'm only getting ten thousand. This has happened before. What is going on? Cars submerged on a um, on a street. What's going on? Missouri. This is the site John Ray woke up to Friday morning. His house was basically in a river. This was a true flash flood. It came up so quick. Flash forward to this morning when the waters had fully receded and cleanup began. All that's going, I'm, I'm trashing all that, all that. After taking pictures for the insurance company of the damage. Look at that. The stuff was all stacked neatly down there before. And calling the adjusters. I have flood insurance. I pay $2,200 for a year, but then you got to argue with them to get them to pay for anything. The big cleanup question came to mind. Where to start? Where to start? Because it was like a catastrophe down here. All day Saturday, Ray and his family moved wheelbarrows full of mud, debris, and ruined stuff. Whatever floats in out of the river, some of it's mine, some of it ain't mine. <laughs> The giant pile of dirty garbage in his backyard is work for another day. But it's work he's willing to do, despite the fact this century-old house has flooded too many times to count. My taxes and my insurance, my taxes, insurance, and flood insurance for this old house is $4,600 a year. <laughs> it's a lot of money for an old house, you know? Yeah. 
But my kids grew up here, and, and one of them still lives here, so, you know, I do what I you know, do what Dad can do. You know? Just want to say to all those people who, you know, throw down their judgmental comments, they should have moved if it's been flooded before, blah, blah, blah. The, you know, there's a an attachment that people have to their home. There's an attachment that people have to, you know, generations who have lived there, their kids, everything, you know. I don't understand those comments at all, at all. You know, this Amazonia in Missouri. North of St. Joseph saw the worst of the flooding. Some areas in Andrew County saw more than a foot of rain. We were not hard pressed to find storm damage up in Amazonia. The area got about 14 inches of rain during last night's storm. All that water damaging cars and homes. We spoke with one woman who was forced to evacuate her house last night and she shared with us what she went through. Firemen came to the door and asked if we wanted to get out. At that time we didn't. Probably 10 minutes later, they come back and said that we're forcing you to leave. You've got to get out now. So we threw some clothes on and got out with nothing on our back. We wasn't able to grab any extra clothes or anything. Proctor told us she's lived in Amazonia for more than 30 years and has never seen flooding like this. She was just one of many who had to flee their homes as waters rose in the small town. Coming up at 6, we'll have more... And many had their homes flooded out in Amazonia. Colorado. These crazy clouds. Jeffrey Martin took this video outside his home at the trailside apartments in Parker, but he never anticipated the oncoming storm would be this powerful Look at all this hail! and leave behind so much damage. This is our entire apartment. The thing is, is there's this lovely... Uh, it's cold. It flooded our apartment completely, like just flooded it bad. Our dressers are, are ruined, uh, TV stands ruined, couches are ruined, rugs are ruined. Martin says while other units were also damaged, in their situation, the water was coming in through their walls. You had people saying that it was coming in through windows, but it, for us it was coming in through the, the wall, like the physical wall on the bottom. It wasn't coming in through our window. And now, with a two-year-old son and a baby due within months, he's worried about continuing to live in this apartment. I feel like it's going to take longer to get this place fixed up then she is going to be pregnant. So by that point, we're not, we don't want to bring a newborn into this apartment. Management quickly provided the Martin family with fans and will help extract the water. But Martin would like to be moved into a different unit. The best ideal situation is just move us into an exact same unit and we'll be happy. Denver 7 reached out to the complex for a response, but staff said management wouldn't return to the office until Monday. The Martin family has already filed the claim to get their personal belongings covered, but their future living situation remains in the air. I wish. Yep, remains in the air. Um, so, playlist, weather modification, you want to learn? Here, click on the link below. And Weather War 101 has, he's not been around, oh, the last video three years ago, but tremendous amount of information right here, especially on those wet surface uh, vapor coolers. We, we are in a war. There's no denying it. And unfortunately, because people will still, still refuse to acknowledge, oh, okay, man can control the weather, they're winning the war.